Good morning, Connect Community Church. Today I'm going to be continuing on with the book of Esther. Let me just read some more about Susa because I think it's important for us to understand about the capital, Susa or, or Shushan, and then I'm just going to bring you up to speed and we're going to be looking at some very important things today. But first about Susa. In the time of Daniel, which was the 6th century, the territory of Elam was already a very ancient land. Located in the modern southwest, Iran, in the province of Khuzestan, Elam shows evidence of beginning urbanization as early as the late 4th millennium BC, with Susa, or Shushan, in the Bible as its major center. The Edomites flourished there until the 7th century BC when they were overrun by the Medes and Persians. Susa was the religious center of Elam during the Neo-Elamite kingdom of the 8th century. The Assyrians waged various campaigns against the Neo-Elamite kings, and in 646 the year, Assyrian king Ashurbanipal destroyed the city. The fortunes of Susa turned for the better under the Persian Empire. During the reign of King Darius I, which was 522 BC to 486 BC, <clears throat> Susa was restored to its position of influence and power in the region. It was evidently the winter capital of the Achaemenid kings of Persia. The rebuilt city consisted of two parts separated by a canal, a lower city, and a fortified royal city. So just a little bit more about the capital. Now bringing us up to speed, the book of Esther is a very important book both for Jews and for Christians just seeing how God protects us, God watches over for us, and even when times seem dire, he is there. And certainly that fits for today, doesn't it? So at the beginning of the book speaks of the Jews in exile. They didn't have to be. They could have returned to the land. But they chose to be in the Medo-Persian Empire. And they were in the, and this speaks specifically about Jews in the capital city of Susa or of um, Shushan. The king of the Medo-Persian Empire had deposed his wife because she didn't do as he bid. He had a beauty contest. Esther, whose Jewish name was Hadassah, won the contest, and he proclaimed her as queen. But the plot thicken, thickens because Haman comes on, and he hates the Jews, and eventually he convinces the king to destroy the Jews. Meanwhile, Mordecai, Hadassah's uncle, or Esther's uncle, who raised her, told Esther not to tell anyone that she was a Jew. The time came when uh, Haman tricked the king into making an edict that all the Jews would be killed. Mordecai found about this. He was at the gate. He lamented over that and wore sackcloth and ashes. When Esther found out, she tried to change, uh, send a change of clothes. And eventually, uh, he gets word to her and he says, look, there's this plot against Jews. You need to do something about it. She complained and said, the king hasn't asked me in for 30 days. I could lose my life. And he mentioned the immortal words <clears throat> of scripture to Esther. And he said, you need to do this because you may be chosen for such a time as this. And then she said to Mordecai, I'll do it. But first of all, get your people to fast. Me and my people will fast. And if I perish, I perish. She went before the king, he accepted her, and he said, what do you want? I'll give you up to my half, half my kingdom. And she said, I'd like to have a banquet with just you and Haman there. When Haman found out about that, he was absolutely delighted. So he, by this time, was really ticked at Mordecai. And so his family said, build a gal 75 feet high and hang him on it, kill him. So he thought that was a brilliant idea, and the next morning he went in and he wanted to pass that by the king. Meanwhile, the king couldn't sleep. You ever had one of those nights? Well, this must have been a really tough night because he had his people come in and say, read me the history books, the dry dusty old history books, names, dates, places, and so they did. And wouldn't you know, they read about Mordecai finding out about the plot to kill the king. 
And Mordecai had told Esther. Esther had told the king. They tried these two men. They killed these two men. But they had not honored Mordecai at all. So when this was read to the king, he said, well, has anything been done to Mordecai to, to, Mordecai to honor him? And they said, no, nothing's been done. And it was just at that moment in time that Haman came in trying to get the king to agree that he would hang Mordecai and kill him. So the king says to Haman, what should I do to honor a man who is deserving and worthy of honor. Well, Haman thought it was speaking of him. I mean, he was thinking, who is more honorable than me? And who is worthy of praise more than me? So he laid it on thick. He said, he should ride on a horse that you have ridden in front of the people wearing one of the old robes of the king, and it should be proclaimed, let this be done to whoever honors the king. And he was thinking that he was going to get it. And the king said, great, that is wonderful. Do this for Mordecai. Well, let me tell you, talk about the shame that Mordecai had, the man that he was trying to kill. He had to go around the city proclaiming, this is what is done for one who honors the king. And Mordecai was being honored in front of everyone. He, Haman was so embarrassed. Well, when that day was over, he ran back to his family, and it, even his wife said, look, you're in trouble, because if that happened, then God is protecting the Jews. Only bad will come of this. So they had had the first banquet, and they had the second banquet, and that's where I'm going to end today, because there's something absolutely remarkable that happened and then we're going to finish up on Friday. So remember, the theme of Esther, God providing for his people, God protecting his people, no matter what comes in your life, remember God. Don't lose sight of him. Rely upon him. Maybe things won't work out the way that you want them to, but God will work them out for the best. Let's pray. Lord, may we have an utter confidence in you. The circumstances of the Jewish people were dire. It did not look pretty. In fact, it looked like an impossible situation. And even for Mordecai, it looked like Haman had him exactly where he wanted him. But you intervened. And not only was his life spared, but he was honored. That may or may not happen to us. But help us to honor you and live for you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. May God bless you richly and make it a great day.